previously on African Big Five Survival Challenge. The guys went in search of life-giving water. We had to compete with a grumpy old buffalo bull and a stubborn elephant for our rights to the water. Dane manages to get a fire started and we had a magical encounter with the white rhino bull. Please sit back and enjoy episode 3. Good morning everybody, so it is going on just after 5.30 in the morning, we've survived our first night, not too eventful, we had some hyenas calling for most of the night and then Dane also had an elephant coming nice and close while I was sleeping, but yeah the sun is not up yet, it's still a bit dark, let's see, still got our fire going. waiting for it to get light. I think uh, we had an eventful first evening, or I added, I had a two hour watch in the beginning and um, after about half an hour of sitting, staring into the darkness, I heard a noise out to my right and about 10 meters away from where I was sitting, just over there, a elephant poked through. All I could see was his tusk through the with the spotlight, and um, yeah, that gave me quite a fright. But that was exciting. <laughs> and then he ambled off, and then came and turned around and walked back across the river, and then up the bank and disappeared. So guys, remember we had that amazing experience with the white runner bull that came right past our shelter um, yesterday afternoon, and then we also showed you it's midden this morning. So as I said earlier, I'm sure he was on his way to the pan that we found yesterday and the pan that we're on our way to now. And we've got evidence of that today, you can see his tracks. So a rhino has three toes, okay? So you can see this is the back of the foot here. Then there's one toe over here, a bigger toe in the front, over there, and then another toe on the side. So obviously look to the direction the toes are pointing and that's the direction he was moving. So it just shows you yesterday afternoon when we were coming back from the pan to our shelter, if we had been half an hour later, we would have come face to face with him on our way back. That would have been very interesting. Okay guys, so as mentioned, we today we need to start looking at finding food. Our bellies are starting to rumble a little bit out here. It is winter, it is a difficult time. Um, summer for food is a bit better because you have your marillas are in fruit, you've got your mopani worms, lots more insects and creepy crawlies running around to choose from. Um, winter is a bit dead, so what we're going to do, we're going to set a few traps. We've seen there's quite a lot of Franklins around, or spur fowls as they are now known. Um, so we're going to set a few little bird traps around camp and see maybe we can get lucky with a Franklin or a guinea fowl, maybe even a dove, <coughs> just to keep us going for the next few days. So. We're going to cut this raisin bush and make rope or twine from the bark and then use that twine as our rope for setting our trap. The bark off, stripped off the, the branch. So now I'm peeling back the inner, the inner bark part. It's much more sort of supple and it'll make much better cordage than the outer rough bark. Now we've gone for a little walk and we found this path well used and there's also Franklin tracks in it and other bird life, other ground birds. So what I'm going to do is with this twine that I made and I'm going to attach it to this springy branch and then set the snare over here and with a trigger mechanism which I'll show you in a bit and uh, the Franklin would walk over it traveling along the path and trigger the snare and it'll catch it by the by the feet so let's give it a go we'll come walk up the path 
walk up, stand on the noose, and bam. There we have our Franklin. <laughs> so now we're starting to look for food. As mentioned, we've set our traps, but we don't know if that's going to catch anything. It depends a lot on luck and chance. So what we can do is eat something that's already there for us. So this tree here with the very shiny leaves is called a buffalo thorn. Now it often grows in areas where there's underground water, but indicative of the, of the buffalo thorn is the fact that it's got one straight thorn and one hooked thorn. Yes. So a better example. Yeah, that's a good one. There's a straight thorn and the hooked thorn. So we call it also a hakenstiak or a blink blar wachebikie, which means a shiny leafed wait a bit tree. Okay, so what you can use this for is you can make a spinach from the leaves. Apparently it's very good for you. So what we're going to do, collect a whole lot of leaves, boil them in water that we find in the riverbed, and then we'll let you know how it tastes. Okay. Okay guys, so Dane's busy cooking us the buffalo thorn leaf spinach. So we obviously just started, it's going to take some time. But we'll let you guys know how we go along. Okay, so that's what it looks like. It doesn't look like much, but the leaves are a lot softer. And yeah, we've got a spoon that Dane made from a piece of wood. Okay. So, bottom is up. What does it taste like? It tastes like spinach. And the texture is soft. Very soft, very spinachy. Like one more bite. Born up a tree. <sighs> So another good way to survive in the bush. Food was the order of the day, so we went out in search of food, trying to use our skills to get a guinea fowl or Franklin. Unfortunately, it didn't go according to plan. Josh had to have a go at the guinea fowl. I think his pinted finger got in the way. That was a bit of a Hail Mary throw. We go hungry again. Oh, that was close. Man, they're quick, eh?
So Josh, tell us why why do you enjoy doing this? Sure, it's a, it's quite a layered question that, but I think the reason why I like doing this is firstly because you you challenge yourself. Um, we out here unarmed, no rifle, no real defence, putting ourselves at nature's mercy, and I think far too often. Especially as a guide, we go out into the bush with, with rifles and vehicles and protection and I don't see it as the greatest test of skill because you always have that last resort. But when you're out here with nothing, you're pitting your, your wits against nature and you're a lot more of an observer than an intruder. You tread a lot more lightly and you're a lot more careful, your senses are all in tune, so you just feel more part of the ecosystem. I think especially after a few days, um, your senses come alive, except for smell. So I can't smell. That hasn't changed. And your whole life. Just to remove yourself from society. I think there's so much, as all of you viewers will know, lately in the world, a lot of chaos, a lot of craziness, a lot of anger, a lot of hatred and resentment and fear. And I think it's just good to get out of that with no phones, no signal, and just disappear and then just reevaluate what's important, what isn't important. Because out here, none of that stuff affects you. Well, your only focus is trying to stay alive and just enjoying every moment, which is what life should be about, which we don't normally get to experience in the real world because of having too many other distractions. And just the peace and the quiet and you know, just being at one with nature, I think. Cool. But Thanks. Great. <laughs> Up next on African Big Five Survival Challenge, food is once again the order of the day. Dane finds something tasty to eat. We have a nice cup of bushwillow tea and we get some protein thanks to a colony of termites. We also encounter a large breeding herd of buffalo. Please. Stay tuned and enjoy episode 4, coming soon.